Welcome to Cooking with a G. Now today we're going to be making some world famous tacos. What, what are these? Um, you're going to need some non-stick uh, uh, skillets. I, I prefer it because you know that way it doesn't stick. What you're going to do is you're going to get a little bit of your... Uh, um, we use mazola right here. You know, the corn oil. Um, you know, because it's good for your calcium and, and all that. Now, you, what you're going to need to do is just put a little bit, a little bit of, uh, of this oil, uh, you know, to give the meat that, you know, that, that you know, that good taste. You know, not, not, I mean a little bit. Eh, you know, you guys get a little carried away and, you know what I mean? And you're going to spread it, you know, throughout your, your, your pan, you know, you want to make sure you, you know you get it all in there. There's a fly in here. Yes, take it up. Now, you know, make sure you, you know. Now I'm using two pans because obviously um, we're gonna make um, asada, chicken, and uh, a pastor. Now the meat is marinated with uh, onion, uh, cilantro, and um, seasoned salt and uh, orange juice uh, to season the meat. That way it gives it that that bomb bomb. You know what I mean? That bomb flavor. Uh, that's what you're gonna use. You're gonna use onion, cilantro. Um, Orange juice and seasoned salt, and try to leave it marinating overnight. Uh, the more longer you leave the it marinating, the better it will taste. Um, so now let's throw them onto the. Oh, make sure we gotta preheat these uh, pans to low heat. Uh, so you guys gotta cook it under low heat. You know what I mean? That way it cooks uh, really well. You know, evenly. You don't want it too high because then you know uh, it's gonna burn. Um, the juices um, are gonna uh, evaporate a lot faster. Um, it's not going to be the same. Um, now which one? Okay. Um, so you want to make sure that, you know, you just leave it preheating for, for about, you know, a few seconds. You know what I mean? Uh, like about a minute. Um, no, like 60 seconds. Um, That's a minute. Now, it's time to put it in there. I'll put the salad in there first. And that's what, you know, this is the chicken right here. Oh, man, look at that. Mm -mm. King Taco ain't got shit on me, bruh. Oh, homie. Now, you want to make sure that you um, flan it out throughout your pan. That way, um, it cooks evenly. Because if, if you just leave it piled on in one pile, what's going to happen is just that the bottom is going to be cooking and the top is not. You know what I mean? So, you want to make sure that you spread it out, you know, throughout the pan. You know, that way you, um, you know... you. You want to make sure that you get try to cook as much of it uh, evenly as possible compared to, um, you know, um, once you, you try to, like, uh, stir it in when it's from the bottom on the top. You know, when you drop it in, that, like, a blob, and then just the bottom is cooking, the top is raw, and then, you know, you have to be trying to take some chicken out because some is already cooked and some is not. You know, that's why you want to spread it out evenly. Uh, that way, you know, it's cooking um, all, you know, at once. And here is the meat. Now... Don't use the same spoon. This is a chicken spoon. Um, the reason you don't want to use the, you know, they add different seasoning to, to the chicken. Now the chicken, how, how you marinate your chicken is cilantro, uh, uh, onion, a little bit of garlic salt, um, salt, and uh, a little bit of pepper, um, followed by uh, just a tad of orange juice on that one. Now with your different spoon, you know, spread out your asada. Uh, I already told you guys how to marinate the asada. Um, Ooh. <laughs> Oh my boy, yeah, we gonna be eating good today. Yeah, now, what y'all know about this, homie? Right here, shit. Mm. Look at that, homie. Ain't no spreads around right here, homie. I'm not about y'all. Ain't no one trying to eat no spread, homie. Like we trying to eat some real food up in this bitch. Nah, we ain't even in there no more. You know what I mean? I mean, you eating spreads in there? I mean, you got no choice. You know what I mean? But. Out here, homie, and there's all kind with all kinds of fucking options. I mean, come on now, homie, why are we gonna be eating a spread? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to act like we in jail. I mean, we ain't even trying to be in there, so why act like we're in there? You know what I'm saying? Remember, don't use the same spoons. You got different spoons. And since we're making tacos, you're gonna need onion and cilantro. You know what I mean? So, some cilantro. You get some fresh cilantro, as you know the fellow Gavarsh will say. It. Some, but try, when you're picking these, uh, when you're picking cilantro, 
make sure that it's um, not too light green because that means that it's like still, um, how can I say, it's not ripe yet, you know what I mean? So you're not really going to get that cilantro taste. Uh, make sure that it's like this color green, like um, dark green, but not too dark, right? Because um, once it starts getting like the dark greenish, yellowish, and like spots like a black on it, that's because it's no good. You know what I mean? I um, I recommend not to use those kind of cilantros. Um, I mean, it's not bad, um, but it's not going to taste a, a, as well as it's when it's like this. See, like this one is good. But see, you'll get like some um, batches of leaves um, that are like this. Let's see if it's, um, uh, So you can try to get it as green like this as possible. Uh, you know what I mean? But that's how you can tell uh, if it's good or not. Um, get your cutting board right here, homie. Whew. Now we're going to get our, 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 our filero, homie. Our, our you know, our, our shank, homie. Not the ones in prison, eh? Like, I mean, a real, like, you know. We're not going to bone check it, homie. You know, we're just, we're just going to dice it up. Um, right here, you know what I'm saying? We'll dice up this cilantro. Remember when you're cutting the cilantro, because I've seen a lot of people make this mistake. Make sure you cut off the stem of the cilantro. For some other reason, I see people, they cut cilantro, they leave the stem in there. Like, no, cut the stem off, bro. Like, come on now. Like, do you eat the stem of an apple? No, you don't, huh? So, you know what I mean? Gotta get all the stems out of there. Um, you know what I'm saying? Because that, you know, what, if you dice it up with the stems in there, um, the stems contain this, um, like that water fluid thing, and um, it's going to mess up the taste of your cilantro. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to want to make sure you get the stems out. I know people get lazy and they just, you know, like screw it, just leave the stems in there. Um, but then your cilantro won't have that, you know, that, that, that taste that it's supposed to have, you know, my boy? Um... Okay. And they literally just come off like nothing, you know what I mean? Like, it's not even that much work to make the, you know, take the stems out. You know what I mean? You can literally just hold the stem and just slide your finger and they literally come off, you know what I mean? Um, so it's not that much work. Now, when the dad is done, you know what I mean? And you're gonna dice it up. Now, the best way to dice up your cilantro is to put in a pile in the middle, like that, and make sure you bend your fingers, you know, and then just run your knife through it. You know what I'm saying? That way you don't cut your fingers, you know, and keep that wall being pressed, you know, that way you get that nice and dice, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Gently, you know what I'm saying? And then just like that. You know what I mean? And then from the different angle. Bam, son. And for the onion, same process. You know what I mean? Make sure you cut it in half, put it in the middle. You know what I mean? That way it's flat, because when it's round, obviously it's going to go everywhere. And dice it up like that in length, and then. Run it from the opposite end. You know, that way you get them in those little square uh, pieces that, you know, you see in the restaurants. And then after that, you know, just keep piling it in the middle and keep dicing it up. Depending how the, how the size of the onion you like. Yeah, baby? I already see you. I said done. Oh. Why was he Dad. You know what I mean? Um... If you want them in big pieces, you know, uh, or if you want them like in really small pieces, just keep putting it in the middle and keep running it at the opposite ends. You know what I mean? And then once they get small enough and diced up enough, they won't run away as much. See what I mean? That's how you get them in those little pieces that you see in the restaurants. Instead of getting like that big old chunk of onion, you know. Depending on some people like those big chunks of onions, but you know what I mean? We ain't trying to We love onions but not that much. 
So your hands are washing everything, yeah? When you're cooking your meat, leave it sitting there. Don't stir it as much. That way it actually cooks. I see people that just always keep moving the meat. Like, you have to let it cook, bro. You, if you keep stirring it, it's not letting it sit there while the heat gets it. You know what I mean? You have to let it sit there and cook. You know what I mean? If you keep messing with it, it ain't cooking it. You know what I'm saying? So you're not trying to, like, be right there, you know, stirring it, everything like that. I would say um, keep stirring it every five minutes. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I'm saying? So, so we're gonna do it. And, and with the chicken, I would say like every 10 minutes because chicken takes longer to cook than beef does, obviously. You know what I mean? You have to let chicken, uh, and more for pork, you know what I mean? Because it takes longer to cook, you know, so you have to let it really be sitting there because you want to make sure that it, that it is cooked, you know, right. So I always have to say like about every 10 minutes for the pork and chicken. You know what I'm saying? And with your meat, you know, make sure that it's diced up. If you could get it diced up already when you get it, it's better. But if not, um, do the same thing as I did with the cilantro and the onions. You know what I mean? Um, when cutting it, um, you know, pile it on the middle. Get yourself a nice sharp knife and dice it up. Uh, homie, you know we got we get down like this in the hood, huh? You see, you know, look, you see that juice? Cause you want your meat being juicy, homie. That's why you know the juice, uh, the lemon, the orange juice, and all that's important, homie. You want, you know, you don't want no dry shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, tampoco, like, don't overdo it and soak it. You know what I'm saying? But you know, bam, son. Remember, don't use the same spoon. Uh, now once it's been sitting there for, you know, cool amount of time, then you, you can crank up the heat to medium. You know what I mean? Um, you know, now that it, you know, it's, you know, somewhat cooked, you can turn up medium now. You know what I mean? Um, for your apastor, if you want to be the one that's seasoning it, um, you're going to need adobo seasoning. Uh, you get it in your supermarket. Uh, so you get adobo seasoning. You get a little bit of salt, you get orange juice, uh, onion, a, a good amount of onion, uh, cilantro, and uh, pineapples. You know, dice up the, you can use canned pineapple, I prefer fresh, but you can use canned pineapple, you know, you drain it, no, with no syrup, no syrup, right, it's in water, uh, or in juice. Uh, make sure you drain the juice, you know what I mean? Then you dice up the pineapples, you're gonna need more, a good amount of onion, you know, for, for a pasta, you need, you know, a good amount of onion. Um, you dice up your, your, your pork. You put it in a bowl, you know, you add your salt, your adobo salt, your little bit of orange juice, you add the pineapples, and, the, and then you, you start mixing it all together. Oh, yeah, that's that pastel right there. Look at that. Delish. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna preheat your kumal. You know what I mean? And then you're gonna need to put oil in a little bowl, like this. Just a little bit, don't overdo it. You're gonna need your little okay, tortillas, okay, the small ones, and you're gonna just dip it. You're gonna dip them in there. Hold on, let's move to the uh, cooking area. No, that's Andrew. You're gonna dip just the edges, and then you're gonna throw them onto your comal, like that. And then with the last one, you dip it by itself, and then you just, you know, give it a little, you know, a little. Bam! And remember to not leave them there that long. You're only gonna leave them on there for like I don't know, 20 seconds, and then you flip them, and like that, because you don't want them to get hard. I have no idea. And look at my wife. Look at her design. Ooh, she gets down. Ah! <laughs> I got myself a real maid kind of. You gotta do it, baby. Go. <laughs> and this is now take two the final product uh, look at that teamwork makes the dream work mm -mm -mm. doesn't look as yummy as my wife but it definitely looks delish now before we all eat we have to go ah, ha, 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 like a real mexican family ready mm -hmm.
One, two, three. Ah, ha, ha, yeah. And that's the product.